Welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Well, today on the show, we're going to talk a lot about fertility and one of the most important steps that you can take on your farm to getting better overall profits is varying how you do things based on the area of the field and the fertility that that area calls for. So today we'll talk about how to make your own variable rate fertilizer maps. Well, if you're going to do that, Brian, it's important to get a complete soil test including micronutrients because one of the nutrients you may want to vary your application on is zinc. We're seeing more issues with zinc across the country in corn and other crops as well. We'll talk more about that today. We have a Weed of the Week coming up later in the show that's very fit to talk about each fall. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about what is a chopping corn head. Now this is just our Farm Basics time, so we're not going to get too in-depth here. But if you're a non-farmer, you might be saying, um, it's a corn head, so what's the difference between a chopping head and a non-chopping head? But this is a big deal. This is huge for our farm, so we want to explain why. Well, okay, so when we're coming through a field with a combine, we want to take the corn, we're going to take the ears into the machine, that it's going to shell that, so it's going to pull all the kernels off those ears, and we're going to eventually put corn up in the tank. And that's the main purpose of a combine running through the field. We're going to take corn, it was standing on a plant on an ear we're going to get it off that ear and into a grain tank that's one job the other job is all the plant residue that stays in that field we want to manage it for next year because when we come back in to plant next spring or to do tillage this fall it's pretty tough if you have those 10 foot tall corn plants and you have a 10 foot long stalk laying out there how do you chop that thing up easy without getting it all tangled in your equipment? Before the chopping corn head came out, what we would often find is we'd have great big stalk pieces that would fall over and in the spring we would try to go plant and what would happen is when we're planting in the spring it's cold and it's wet. And so think about any plant, even if it's dead plant material, when it's cold and wet is it easy to cut through that? No, it's not. So what happened is we'd come along with our planter and we'd try to cut through that residue, but we couldn't. And so since we couldn't cut through the residue, we'd end up dropping the seed and it would fall right on this piece of residue. Well, seed landing on a piece of residue means that seed is probably not going to grow. So that's not a good thing. The other issue is we would have problems with this residue breaking down real quickly for us because the whole point is last year's residue or what we're combining right now, once that breaks down, that leaves nutrients for the next crop. So we want it to break down as quickly as possible so we get nutrients going into that next crop. That's a great thing. But if we have great big pieces, then the bacteria have a more difficult time getting inside that and breaking that all down. It just takes a lot more time. If we can slice that plant open, split it, cut it into small pieces, now the residue can get broken down much faster and it's real easy to push to the side. We don't have to even cut through it anymore when we go along to plant, so we're ending up with better plant stands, faster residue breakdown, and you know what, even a little bit warmer soil. Okay, there were a couple of ways that we could chop these stalks up. So farmers used to run through fields with combines, and they still do in some cases today. Then they'd come back with basically like a big lawnmower, and they call it a stock chopper. And then they'd mow down whatever stalks are out there, try to chop them up into little pieces. The problem with that system was the combine has run through the field. Maybe a grain cart has run through the field, or even some trucks on the end of the field, and they've driven over some of the stalks and kind of matted them down on the ground, and now that stock chopper can't get them. With the the chopping corn head, now all the stalks are chopped before any wheels ever touch them or any tracks ever touch them out in the field. So with the combine head, now we do all that chopping so all the residue is all sized up nice and even and everything is perfect as you go through the field. One of the concerns that some farmers have with these chopping corn heads is, boy, it's making the pieces so small, I'm worried they're going to blow away. And how we basically solve that problem or reduce that problem on our own farm is we just cut the stalks a little bit higher than we might normally. So we're cutting them at, let's say, 18 inches or possibly 
possibly 24 inches. So then there are some big stock pieces. So when the little pieces start blowing around a little bit, then they catch on the bigger stock pieces and they pretty much stay in that field. Well, the other thing that happens is in the northern U.S. and especially towards the western Corn Belt where we don't get a whole lot of moisture, we'll catch more snow now in those fields too. And we leave those stalks standing a little bit taller. And when we catch that snow out in the field, that's moisture that we'll use for next year's crop. It really helps the whole system in a number of ways. Hey, one last thing I'll just mention real quick about our chopping corn heads. They're also folding corn heads. We never used to have this before, but it's one of the things we farm about 10 miles away from the largest city in the Dakotas and driving down the roads, you never know what kind of people you're gonna run into there. Chances are it's not a farm person. They have no idea what's going on and they're driving as fast as they possibly can without any regard for what else is on the road. So we really like it when we can fold up the outsides of our corn head and go pretty narrow down the road. It just makes it that much safer. Well, chopping corn heads are certainly a nice thing. Many farmers have adopted them into their systems. One thing that they don't completely solve for us though is weed control. We'll show you how to stop this week's Weed of the Week coming up later in the show. Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. When you need one machine that can do it all, you send in a Spartan, your all-in-one forage solution from Capella USA. This direct cutting system is the right machine for almost any forage crop and gets everything done in a single pass, keeps your cost down. Always versatile, the Spartan can be configured to fit any self-propelled forage harvester in the world. So, no matter what you forage, send in a Spartan from Capella USA. Italian craftsmanship, American grit. Farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Looking to maximize yield? Quick Roots from Monsanto BioEgg is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more, and is applied to the seed so the live microorganisms go right to work enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Get Quick Roots today. Regalia RX Biofungicide activates a plant's natural defense system, limiting the effects of disease and improving overall plant health. Regalia RX complements your fungicide program to optimize yield and strengthen return on investment. Ask your retailer for Regalia RX today. One of the most important things you can do on your farm is take a look at micronutrients. Now, this last summer on our farm, we had some of the top yielding corn, soybean, and wheat farmers in the country with actual plots on our farm. It was a lot of fun and we learned a bunch of things. So I've had many farmers ask me, well, what's like the number one thing that you've learned from a lot of these high yield guys? And I just said, micronutrients. Almost all of them have a much bigger focus on micronutrients than we've ever had before. And so today, let's talk specifically about one very important micronutrient. You don't need lots of it, but if you don't have it, you are not going to have the yield you want. It's zinc. All right, I can hear it already and it's probably going on in your minds. Zinc, well, that's for corn. I'm going to plant soybeans this year. Right. I'm going to plant cotton or I'm going to plant sorghum or something else. That's a corn nutrient, right? Wrong. When we think about these micronutrients, so often we get into this narrow focus of, well, hey, boron, that's important for alfalfa. Uh, molybdenum, that's important for soybeans. And zinc is important for corn. 
Forget all that. We need a little bit of all these microbes in every crop, so don't worry about that. What we do need to look at, though, is our soil testing program this fall. If you're taking plant tissue analysis throughout the season, that's going to be really important to see how our soil testing is working and how our soil fertility program is working. But it starts right now. When we're taking soil tests this fall, we have to include these micronutrients to make sure we're getting enough zinc. The question, Brian, is what is zinc really doing in the plant? <laughs> all right, so you know what? We've covered what does zinc do in the plant many times here on Ag PhD, and you can look that up yourself. What we really care about is yield. And that's the number one thing that I want to focus on today is let's just look at the yield benefits of zinc. If you've got a real high level of N, P, and K, and we find a lot of farmers have spent all their money in N, P, and K, and not very much on these micronutrients, you know what? It might not be the N, P, K limiting you at all. In fact, just the field that's right behind us here, for a portion of that field, we're going to put some winter wheat in this fall. And right before the guys seeded it, they said, well, what should we throw out there for nutrients? Uh, let's throw, how about some P and K? We'll throw a bunch of P and K out. And I said, whoa, 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 guys. Let's take a look at the soil test. What's the soil test tell us? Oh, yeah, we should look at that first. Well, you know what the soil test said? The soil test said, don't spend one dollar on phosphorus, spend a bunch of money on micronutrients. So we put our, all our fertilizer dollars into potassium and micronutrients. All right, it's not the standard fertility program, but guess what's going to happen to our yield next year and our profitability because we followed the soil test instead of following what the old standard has always been. Okay, well you say, guess what's going to happen to our yield next year? That's the challenge. If you haven't ever done this and you say, man, I've never done micronutrients, I've never tested for micronutrients or the co-op that's doing the testing on my farm they never test for micronutrients it must not be important wrong and then you're worried okay i'm going to do this on one field and try it out but i'm really nervous about the results you don't have to be nervous about the results because our farm has done this many times and a lot of other farms have done this too and that's kind of why brian started talking about hey what are the best farmers in the country doing the best farmers are looking at these micronutrients, looking at what levels they need in their field, and then picking out specific micronutrients that can help them increase their yields. And certainly, if you do address N, P, and K, that's great. But then you get the micronutrients also up to a good level. That's where you can really see your yields take off. All right, so here's what we're looking for is 1.8 parts per million to 3.5 parts per million on a Midwest lab soil test. Every lab has a little different extraction process, maybe give you a little different number. So we're just talking about Midwest labs. I can't tell you based on your lab where you should be. But all I know is if we're talking corn, soybeans, or wheat with Midwest Labs, we'd really like to see that level in the 1.8 to 3.5 parts per million range. I will tell you, uh, embarrassingly, we've had some fields where it's a half a part per million or 0.1 parts per million is our record low. Okay, if it's 0.1 parts per million and I need to be to 1.8 parts per million, how do you think that's affecting yield? It's a big, big deal. Yet, here's the nice thing, it doesn't cost a lot of money because we're only talking about a few pounds per acre. You can go to the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app. It's a free app for your smartphone or your tablet. And you can look at how much zinc does the crop actually need. That's one component of it. But we just want to get the soil level to be in that 1.8 to 3.5 parts per million so it's also available. So we know how much we're going to remove, but we got to make sure it's available in the soil. And the problem is if we don't have enough parts per million in total, we might have other micronutrients or other macronutrients like phosphorus, for example, binding that up. All right, so the big question now is how do we get this thing on? Because you got two things here. One, building up the soil. That sounds like a broadcast application to me. And then two, feeding this year's crop. And many times, especially when we're talking about micronutrients, we're looking at something like a two by two placement where we have immediate access to those micros. What's your feeling? Well, my feeling is this. I absolutely want to build the soil up. And yes, in that case, maybe a broadcast is the way to go and we just have that over with. Keep in mind though, that zinc stays with the soil. It's not going to leach down. So what I'm trying to say here is, let's say you're in a no-till situation and you're going to broadcast it out on the soil surface and then you have some erosion. If your soil moves, guess what moves with it? Not just phosphorus, but zinc also. So ideally, in a no-till situation, I'd like to put that down in the ground at least a couple inches. In terms of what you're going to put out there, we usually like to have a blended micronutrient package and we'll typically do that in furrow. You can do it two by two and then you could use more, but we like the blend of a bunch of different micros to make sure we have a good balance and we can feed that plant real early in the season when it's cold, root growth isn't much, all that kind of thing. Then in addition to that, we're talking typically about products like zinc sulfate. That's about as cheap a form as 
you can get if you want several pounds per acre out there. We want to try to do this as economically as possible whenever we're putting fertilizer on. And a lot of times these micronutrients will come together with sulfur, zinc sulfate, copper sulfate, manganese sulfate, and so on. Well, zinc is a very important nutrient for corn and for other crops as well. When you're doing your soil testing this fall, that's one that we really strongly suggest you looking at in addition to the other micronutrients. Well, another thing you may be looking at this fall is how you're going to control our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to do it on your farm coming up later in the show. Presenting the new 2016 Apache Sprayer. If you could save money and increase yield, why wait? Delaying change can cost you money. It's phenomenal the return of investment it brings back. In my mind, a sprayer is the biggest return of investment you can bring back. Apache owners apply in half the time for full type, apply when they want versus custom, and spend less than hydrostat owners, not to mention less weight on their crops. Go ahead and compare. We hope you do. Visit etsprayers.com to locate a dealer and how to save with an Apache. Apache, now more than ever. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly. Spring or fall, the Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. I trust Agro Liquid because I've seen the results and they're positive and they work on my farm, they work in my environment. When I started farming, we was farming around 125 acres and now we're up to around 1,700 acres. I think I was recognized as the Tennessee Young Farmer by being a leader in the community and also being innovative. I'm always looking for new products, but I got to make sure that those products are sustainable. I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old and I would love for them to farm this land. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. I've been involved in developing new technologies in agriculture for over three decades. The changing times demanded that we develop new and better equipment. Dry powder applications on seed can only be highly successful if they can be easily, effectively, and accurately applied to the target. That's where our company, Changing Times, and CT applicators come into the picture. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, soybean inoculants, or other dry products. Remember, CT applicators for the changing times. How can you make your own variable rate fertilizer maps? This is one of the things we talk to farmers all the time. They get a little scared by technology and they say, oh man, that just seems too complicated. I don't think I could do that job myself and apply that fertilizer in a variable rate form on my own farm. Well, we're here to tell you today that not only is this easy, not only is this possible, but you can get yourself set up probably in a day or less. It's not that big a deal. The biggest part of this, you probably already have the technology in your tractor to do this today. You just need to get your implement set up. It's great having this technology available today because let's face it, you've got areas on your farm, they stink. You got other areas on your farm that are fantastic. Why dump a bunch of money and waste a bunch of money on your bad ground and kind of underfeed your really good ground. Let's vary it and adjust according to the soil. All right, so we're talking about building variable rate maps. Then the next cool thing, Brian, with technology is getting it out to your equipment. So literally, you can have your brother out actually working in the field while you're back playing on the computer building maps. And as he gets done with one field, you can just send him the map for the next. So you don't have to see him for another few hours. It yep, can be a great thing. But you know what? Here's the thing. To make these maps, you know how long it takes us on our farm? Honest to God, three minutes. That's all it, it takes. It may take something a little bit more if you've got, you know, some Once huge variation some out there and you yeah, say, you know what? Uh, there's Here's this area over here. Let's do something a little different. But you're right. It only takes just a few minutes per three. field. Three minutes. Not, not much time in at fact, all. In fact, anymore, we can do it in less. Depends I'll, on how I'll much brotherly right now, debate there is. If 
there's a good so brotherly debate going. It might take a yeah, half an seriously, hour. Seriously, here's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so we have roughly 30 fields. We farm about 2,700 crop acres. 30 fields times three minutes, that's 90 minutes. It's really that simple. It seriously is. So how do you make it that simple? Well, here's how. We've developed this Ag PhD soil test app. It's free. You get our recommendations for free. You can get controller files for free. The only thing you're paying for is just soil analysis out of Midwest Labs, just like you normally would. So that's no big deal. We set all this up so you can make more money on your farm. We're trying to help you as much as we can. That's why we do our show, and that's why we created this Ag PhD soil test app. Just go to agphdsoiltest.com. You can set up your maps, and then once you get your soil results back, then right off that agphdsoiltest.com, you can go right in, buy field, and you can look at how you're going to make those controller files. And like Darren said, you can send them right to the combine, or you can just take a little flash drive or something and go that way. You can also make your own maps based on your yield map, based on your soil type. But our biggest suggestion is do it based on a good soil test. Variable rate fertilizer is something that can definitely be good for the environment and good for your bottom line. Take a look at it, start with good soil tests this fall, and you can set up your maps for free with the Ag PhD Soil Test app. Another thing that's good for your bottom line is improving weed control. We'll tell you how to stop this tough weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. fall panicum, but Darren, here's my question. Why do they call this fall panicum when it's a summer annual? All right, well, how many grasses don't start until <laughs> the fall? I mean, it starts later than other grass plants. That's why it's got the name fall, in my opinion anyway. It's one of the later grasses that comes. And so it really doesn't start in the fall. It's just no, that it, 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 you will a lot of times see it in the fall and it's gonna look better than some of those spring grasses. Yeah, and you're gonna see it more in the fall because you know what, our pre-emerge herbicides actually have pretty good activity on it, but they peter out by the time fall panicum comes, and then you've got fall panicum escapes late in the season. The cool thing too with this weed is, a guy say, well, how do you identify it? You know, it's got a hairy legule like many of the other grass plants do, but you look at the leaves, it has hairs on the undersides of the leaves, not on the top side, and then later on as that plant gets bigger, it loses those hairs on the bottom of the leaves. So it's strange. So <laughs> you look confusing. at it and you say, well, it's hairy on the underside of the leaf. Wait a second, this big plant isn't. I don't know why that happens, but it does. All right, anytime we have a plant that's going to come up a little later in the season, crop canopy is your number one weed killer. So do everything possible to raise a great crop. Other than that, like Darren said, the pre's can hold it back. It's just they kind of run out of steam later in the year. So you may consider using a pre-emerge herbicide, something like an Outlook Dual Harness Surpass, after you've planted and after the corn has even emerged. So what you could do is do some of the pre early, some of the pre a little bit later to extend your residual later in the season. Otherwise, Roundup's good on it. Accent's not Liberty. too bad in corn. You've got all those grass killers in soybeans like Select Max. And once you go to wheat, we generally don't have a big problem because wheat is a crop that thrives early in the spring and it's done by the time fall panicum is usually getting going. That's all the time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Stop coring your bins with the AgriDry Gravity Grain Spreader. Traditional bin filling systems create uneven concentrations of grain and fine particulates. Uniform grain distribution allows even airflow throughout the entire bin, giving you more control over temperature and moisture content, increasing your grain quality and bottom line. Call us today for more information. Dry Load Store, one 855 dry Welcome to the 30-second tour of your local poet plant. Local producers sell us tons of their grain. We grind it, mix it with water and special enzymes. 
The result is fermented, distilled, and dehydrated until it's 200 proof alcohol. Corn oil is extracted, and protein and nutrients are condensed, dried, and turned into animal feed, bringing our tour to an end with high protein feed and cleaner burning high octane fuel. Visit poet.com to learn more. There are no marks of conflict lining this landscape. No echoes of economic hardship, just the unmistakable murmur of Mother Nature's hand. In the perennial quest to outperform, ensure your crop gets the nutrients it craves with a Veil Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. Nothing helps protect your investment more so you can grow confidently no matter what comes your way. A Veil, hold your ground. When we use agriculture liquid, uh, we'll usually end up with 2.7 to 3 pounds of gain per animal a day. We had a 100 head out on a pasture this last fall that gained at 2.7. You know, they made about 450 bucks. We usually get about a 10 day start. It's ready 10 days early. And we're grazing and they're waiting and we're gaining. Dirty work pays. That is if your dirty work includes a Soil Max Gold Digger tile plow. Soil Max tile plows feature zero deflection technology. With the only tile plow factory paired with Ag Leader's IntelliSlope control system, you eliminate the need for grade calculations and lasers. So make your next investment in a Soil Max Gold Digger. Better yield, longer planting and harvest windows, better water management is all yours with Soil Max. Visit SoilMax.com. Presenting the new 2016 Apache Sprayer. If you could save money and increase yield, why wait? Delaying change can cost you money. It's phenomenal the return of investment it brings back. In my mind, a sprayer is the biggest return of investment you can bring back. Apache owners apply in half the time for full type, apply when they want versus custom, and spend less than hydrostat owners, not to mention less weight on their crops. Go ahead and compare. We hope you do. Visit ETSprayers.com to locate a dealer and how to save with an Apache. Apache, now more than ever. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Dry corn in the field leads to an increase in shatter loss talk about how to deal with that problem in today's Iron Talk. Whether you're right in the middle of harvest or already done, the best time of year to brainstorm equipment fixes is now. Fortunately, the best time to purchase parts is coming up too, as many dealers have sales on parts during the winter months. With shatter loss during corn harvesting, there are a couple obvious points to make. First, harvesting at 18 to 20 percent moisture reduces harvest loss tremendously. In an ideal world, that's when we'd harvest everything to maximize yield and minimize problems. Second, every kernel that doesn't make it into the combine is a potential volunteer corn plant in your field for next growing season. The weed competition costs you yield. The weeds themselves, volunteer corn, cost you money to control. If you're continually running into problems with grain getting too dry in the field before harvest, there are different fixes available for nearly every kind of harvesting machine. The first step would be to speak with your equipment dealer for upgrades or modifications you can make to your specific brand of harvesting equipment. Secondly, there are aftermarket fixes advertising up to an 80% reduction in shatter loss at the header. If you don't think you can afford to fix things, stop and consider the economic loss you're seeing in the field. Two kernels of corn per square foot equates to about one bushel of yield loss. If you're losing three bushels per acre on 1,000 acres, that's about a $10,000 loss. This doesn't even include the yield loss and expense of the volunteer corn or beside for your next crop. Shatter loss is a serious problem in corn, especially when corn gets too dry. Do some harvest loss counts on your farm and look into the fixes to put this lost income back into your pocket. That's it for today's Iron Talk, but now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seedbed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. 
Well, that's our time for today, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to Sirius XM Channel 147. That's the rural radio channel, and you'll find the Ag PhD radio show there each weekday at 2 p.m. Central. Well, don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Did you realize that the type of corn used for ethanol and livestock feed is much different than the sweet corn on your dinner table? For more information, visit rnmf.org.